We Singaporeans are fast, focused and productive and we probably have a little help from the most commonly used drug in the world, caffeine. Everywhere in Singapore there are cafes, be it hipster or big franchises. So let's find out which is the best coffee you can get from a mainstream, popular and commonplace franchise cafe. But first, we need to get some coffee. Alright, so basically, I'm gonna try to hit two malls and try to get like seven coffee places. There you go. Have a nice day. We're gonna go coffee bean with a fucking Starbucks in our hands. Yeah. That's a flash logo. Ah, there you go. Flash logo, bro. Okay, so we're back at base. Let's find out which of these seven coffees taste the best. So to standardize it, I got Americano from all of these places. Maybe we do cold brew next time, but I wanted to standardize because some of these places don't actually have a cold brew, even though cold brew is better. But Americano basically is espresso plus a bit of hot water. So which one tastes the best? We'll find out now with a blind test. Assistant, give me that first cup of coffee. The smell wise, it's got a good roast to it. It's not like the strongest roast ever, but it definitely has a good caramelized sweet smell, which is good. In terms of taste, it's definitely a bit harsh. So it's harsh on both sides of the coins because coffees are usually really harsh with the bitterness or really harsh with the acidity. With this coffee, you've got quite a strong, coarse bitter flavor, but also a rather strong acidity to it. It's one of the most sour coffees I've tried out of all the franchise coffees I've tried in my life. Interesting. I mean, most franchise coffees tend to be more of bitter than acidic from my experience. But the acidity on this isn't actually that bad. I don't think it's like just sour, sour, sour. It's just, it's more than usual. And the acidity is paired with a certain hint of fruitiness. So it's actually not all bad. I personally don't think it's all that bad for an Americano. I, I, I personally think this is pretty nice. Like for my own personal score, it would be like a 7 or a 7.5 out of 10. <clears throat> but for most mainstream drinkers, you probably prefer a more bitter brew with less acidity than what this has. And for that group of people, this is probably more like a 6 or a 5.5 out of 10. So bring me cup 2. I already have a headache. It's not looking good. This one's definitely like a lighter roast than the previous coffee. It smells less strong. That's, that's one thing that's for sure. And it also doesn't have as caramelized or as sweet of a smell, which, oh, in terms of taste, this is just, it's not really good. It, it, yeah, it's, it's not really nice. It's just bitter and then bitter and then bitter. And then there's a smell of coffee in the back of your throat, but then it's just, it's bitter throughout. There's no appeal to it. It's not very good coffee. It just feels like fuel. So in terms of scoring, I definitely give this a personal score of 3 out of 10. I absolutely won't drink this coffee ever again. It's bitter and harsh and just, it has no fragrance, no aroma, no complexity. It's not interesting at all to me. But I think for the mainstream audience, this is very bitter. And I think actually a lot of people are used to very bitter coffee because they're used to like Nescafe, Kopitiam coffee. Nanyang coffee has quite a harshness to it sometimes. So I think for the mainstream audience, this is gonna be like a 5 out of 10. Like a, you know, you could drink it as fuel to wake yourself up. But in terms of like an enjoyable drink, absolutely not it. Cleansing my palate. Coffee tree. So in terms of smell, this definitely smells really quite nice. It's definitely a notable improvement over coffee two. Compared to coffee one, it's as strong in terms of its fragrance and aroma, but it has a different type of smell. So coffee one was very caramelized, very sweet smelling of a roast. This one just feels like a dark, heavy, strong coffee roast. You know, it's just a coffee smell. So in terms of taste, this coffee definitely has more acidity than coffee one. It's definitely more sour, but there's also less fruity notes and fruity smell. But the bitterness of this coffee is way less harsh, way better managed than in the first coffee. Do enjoy this quite a bit. So for my personal score, I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. But it is a very sour coffee. So as for the mainstream audience, I think mainstream drinkers might prefer this a little bit more because coffee one was just really harsh with the acidity and the bitterness. Uh, and coffee too was just really harsh with the bitterness. So I think for mainstream drinkers, this will be more like a 6 or 6.5 out of 10. They say don't mix your alcohol. Honestly, don't mix your caffeine sauces. <sighs> Alright, we're halfway there. Almost. Coffee for... This has a very nice smell to it. I think it's quite balanced. It's not really strong caramelized smell that Coffee One had, but it's also not just pure coffee roast smell. Co uh, coffee Tree had, which was just like a very heavy dark roast smell. This is kind of in between. <coughs> It's not bad, I just choked. So in terms of taste, this Coffee 4 is pretty good. I mean, I won't personally like this all that much. But I think for mainstream audiences, this is going to be a very popular coffee. So this has no acidity at all. It's not sour at all. The bitterness is definitely there, but 
it is not really harsh. It's not really like number two where it was just bitter, bitter, bitter and painful. This one, it, it's bitter. It's quite well managed and quite well controlled. And you do get this very smoky, roasted smell. As for my personal taste, it doesn't really fit it as well. So I'm giving it a 6 out of 10 for my personal score. But for mainstream drinkers, I think most people would enjoy this coffee the most out of the last four we've tried. So I'm giving it a mainstream score of 7.5 out of 10. Coffee number five. In terms of the smell of coffee number five, it definitely has a very similar type of smell where it's not super caramelized smelling, but also not super, you know, dark roast smelling. It's kind of in between as well. But the intensity is far lower in terms of its smell. So the, the fragrance and the aroma is definitely lesser than the previous coffee but it does have a similar smell profile. You know what I mean? It's the same type of smell, just less strong. So let's get into tasting. Oh, this one's, this one's harsh. This one's harsh. Yeah, this one is definitely quite a harsh coffee. I don't, I don't really like it all that much. It's quite, there's like a bit of acidity, fruit smell at the start, but it's quickly washed away by a very harsh, bitter taste. Fills it to the brim with bitterness. It's not as bad as number two, where it was just bitter, 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 but it's not as good as one, three, or four. Yeah, I, I don't really like this coffee. The smell isn't very strong, the fragrances aren't very strong, and when you drink it, the flavors are also very, very minimal. The, it's quite bitter, and the bitterness is not only quite strong, it's also very prevalent, it also lingers. It's also really harsh. 10, it's, it's a slight improvement over number two. Number two is undrinkable, but this, this is a, it's not something that I would like at all. So personal score, 4.5 out of 10. Extreme score, 5.5 out of 10. In terms of coffee number six, the smell is definitely more like coffee number three, where it's kind of a dark roast smell rather than a really caramelized sweet smell. So in terms of the taste of this coffee, it's actually quite a nice balanced cup of coffee. So it's got an acidity at the start, not a very sour acidity like coffee one or coffee three, more of a gentle acidity at the start. And the acidity is accompanied by a slight flavor of fruitiness, but it's very minimal and you won't notice it unless you are really paying attention. So it's nothing to write home about. But I do enjoy that the bitterness that comes after the acidity is also not very harsh. It's very mild bitterness. It's quite gentle. And I really do like that it does have that strong roasted smell and aroma. And it's got a little bit of like the best of both worlds of sour and bitter. It's, it's very well balanced of a coffee. Now, personally, I'll give coffee six a 7.5 out of 10 for personal enjoyment because I really do like how balanced it is. I mean, as far as franchise coffees go, this is quite a nice mainstream balanced blend that I do appreciate. And I think for mainstream drinkers, a lot of people will like this because it's not too strong in one direction. It's very, you know, in the middle. And I would give this like an 8.5 out of 10 for mainstream. And finally, for coffee seven, uh, I, I'm seeing like quadruple right now. That's how, let's give it a taste. In terms of smell, this definitely has a sweeter smell. It's more similar to number one in terms of its like caramelized note. I nothing against it. I like that kind of smell. This is sour, but it doesn't have the nice fruitiness that sour comes with it. But then it's followed up by a bitterness that's really harsh, that it's not really accompanied by like a roasted smell. It's sour, then bitter with no fruitiness and no roastedness. It, I don't like this coffee at all. This is this is not really very desirable. Personal enjoyment, this gets a solid 4 out of 10. And in terms of mainstream enjoyment, I think most people won't really enjoy this coffee as well. Probably would give it a 5 out of 10 for mainstream enjoyment. It okay, so I'm gonna guess which coffee is which now. First, I'm guessing Flash. Second, I'm guessing Dunkin' because it's so bitter. Number three, I'm guessing Coffee Bean. Four, I'm guessing Hugs because it's kind of like not a lot of acidity, which is Hugs. Kith, I'm guessing five. Paris Baguette is my guess for number six. Um, and number seven, I'm guessing Starbucks because it's so piss awful. So, what is, what is the coffee guess? I don't care if I get it wrong. Number one. Okay, so number one is Flesh. It's Starbucks. Okay, so Starbucks is god-awful. God no one's surprised. Number three is Kith. So my favorite coffee is Kith. Coffee Bean is number four. Coffee Beans impressed me, I guess. And number five is Harry's Baguette. Coffee number six is Duncan. Duncan's actually decent. I actually like Duncan. I thought Duncan would be bad. It was just like a crappy machine. Maybe it's just, I just have bad taste buds. <laughs> and last one that I hated is Hugs, which is weird because Hugs. Yeah, I still hate it. It doesn't have a smell. 
it's sour and it's bitter. You know, I'm, I'm not tripping, right? I would expect hugs to do better because like my f sisters love hugs way more. But it's it's sour, it's bitter, but it has no flavour, it's no smell. Maybe because they always drink like lattes. Okay, so those are the coffees and their respective numbers. And honestly, I'm kind of surprised by some of them. For one, I'm definitely surprised by Flash Coffee being um, this fruity and this fragrant. It is too harsh, I think, in terms of its bitterness. In terms of its acidity and its fruitiness, I'm actually surprised by how it actually has a good amount of aroma and fragrance. Good job, Flash Coffee. Not bad. Uh, number two is no surprises here. Starbucks is the worst coffee ever known to man. It is half a grain of coffee, a bunch of bitterness, and a bathtub full of water in terms of dilution. It's terrible. We've known this for decades, so don't drink Starbucks unless you absolutely have to. Keith being number three was a surprise because number three was my favourite coffee. Now, a lot of people are not going to like this coffee. It is my favourite because I like acidic coffees. This is why I like Arabica, which is just piss sour. But Kith, you know, despite many people telling me they don't like it because it's too sour, I like it and I was surprised by how good it is. But it's more expensive. I think it's the most expensive per volume out of all of this seven. Coffee Bean is a pleasant surprise. I wrote that Coffee Bean was kind of just a non-offensive one, like a, a decent one. I thought it was hugs, but it was Coffee Bean. So good job, Coffee Bean. You're not that bad. You're not Starbucks level bad, so good job. Paris Baguette was a solid 4.5 out of 10 for personal and 5.5 out of 10 mainstream for me. So basically it's mid, because it's it's not a place you go for coffee, it's a place you go for pastries. The coffee is just kind of a side ring to dip your pastries in and go well with your pastries in. And you won't really be focusing on the coffee flavour in Paris Baguette, you'll be focusing on the flavour of the pastries and the cakes, which they have many and are excellent. So I'm not going to judge Paris Baguette being average too harshly. Number six being Dunkin Donuts is an absolute uh, world shaking surprise for me. I expected this to be like far below because the machine that they were making it with just was just this integrated coffee grounding machine, beans machine, expression. I think the reason it does well is because it's an integrated machine. So the coffee beans are not actually pre-ground. So they can keep more of their flavour. They're ground by the machine and made by the machine on the spot. So maybe that's why the coffee has a bit more of a stronger aroma. It manages to retain more of it. But I just like how balanced it was. It was a very pleasant drink. So Dunkin' Donuts, pretty good. It's also, I think, one of the more affordable ones as well. So I would be definitely getting this again if I do end up getting a donut. That's the main problem with getting coffee from Dunkin' Donuts. You get tempted to get a donut and you eat like 250 calories worth of donuts in one go, which is not very good for health. It is a pretty pleasant coffee and this was a big surprise for me, which is awesome. And this one, hugs being seven, being something that I really didn't like all that much, was also a big surprise. So the thing about hugs for me is that my sisters, who are the people in my family who supposedly know coffee very well because we drink so much coffee, uh, tell me that hugs is the one they liked a lot. They, they think it's pretty decent, uh, especially when compared to Kith or Flesh or Duncan. But I don't like it all that much. I think the reason for this though is pretty simple. It's more of a bitter, harsh blend. And my sisters tend to drink lattes and cappuccinos and things mixed into the coffee. And when you have a stronger, harsher blend, it tends to go well more with milk and mixing things in than sour and fruity blends. So that's probably why they like hugs so much and I don't like hugs as much. But uh, that, that's my verdict. It's all subjective, it's all personal experience. I'm not the be all and end all of coffee tasting and judging. But these are my personal opinions and I think I've learned a lot about which coffees I would like to drink in the future, namely kind of these three, and which coffees I would tend to avoid, which is mainly Starbucks. I hate Starbucks. Starbucks is garbage. It's like the HL milk of, uh, it's like the HL, it's the HL milk of coffees. It's, it's terrible. In terms of like what would be my future daily drinker, honestly, I'll just get whatever is easily accessible. And considering Hugs has a store that's very close to my home, it'd still likely be this, or frankly just Yakun, because Yakun's a lot cheaper. <laughs> Anyway though, apart from Starbucks being unanimously bad, I'd just like to remind you that all these coffee opinions are subjective. They're just opinions. And if you disagree with them, I'd love to hear your disagreements down below in the comments. It's okay. I'm open to debate, open to discussion, and I love to hear what you think as well. I'm not like a super coffee expert and I'm not like the be all and end all of coffee tasting. So if you feel like I'm wrong, that's okay. We can always agree to disagree. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and never buy Starbucks Americana.